Robert Downey Jr. decided to dedicate himself to acting when he was in the 11th grade. With the permission of his film director, Father, he set off for New York and was soon cast in John Sayles' film. After several teen films and a stand on Saturday Night Live, Downey's most important role came in adaptation of the Bret Easton Ellis book, Less Than Zero. In 1992, he received an Oscar nomination for his lead role in Chaplin. Notable roles followed in Shortcuts and Natural Born Killers. Presently, Robert Downey Jr. stars in the 17th century period film, Restoration, and we're pleased to have him here. Welcome. Thank Great you. Not only that, you're also in uh, Richard III and Home for the Holidays. Yeah. I mean, what is going on? How do you have three films that are sort of... Well, it's... It's uh, been a busy year. Yes, but see, it's all by design. In fact, you know, just like... The uh, opening of one got delayed, so it made it seem like I was busier than I was. Yeah, one got delayed. Yeah, restoration yeah. Is, is kind of, you know, could have come out earlier at earlier yeah. times, but they decided to wait with it. Yeah. Let's talk about it, restoration and, and how it came about and who was your... Well, I remember, it's a really great book yeah. uh, by Rose Tremaine, and um, I just fell in love with the story of this kind of philandering philanthropist, this, guy, this mm. kind of, you know, a uh, womanizing uh, physician in the 17th century who mm. kind of, it's really kind of a, almost a, Joseph Campbell would be able to explain it pretty well, <laughs> you know. The, the, we, it, we need some. Yeah, yeah. It's some uh, myth, uh, myth talk, but yeah, it's pretty, you know, it's kind of, a, it's really a journey really from kind of, you know, into manhood. Yeah. Tell me about the character. I mean, he, he, what happens is the king has a mistress. Yes. The king has a mistress, and while after having done Marivel many favors by giving him a place at Marivel court, Marivel is the doctor you play. Marivel, yeah. the guy they play, right. um, uh, putting him in charge of the 18 royal spaniels, yeah. he decides that uh, it's time for Marivel to return the favor, and he would like to do that by marrying one of his mistresses to get one of his other mistresses off his back about that mistress. So basically, it's just a paper bridegroom. All right, take a look. Here's a clip. Restoration. Robert Downey Jr. Lady Celia, I have come to bid you welcome to Binult. No, I do not desire to be made welcome. The king will very soon ask me back to him. I'm sure he will. I'm sure he has of late been most distracted by the foreign wars. But in the meantime, if there's any comfort I might provide here at Binult for your ladyship. No, there is nothing. Nothing. Um. Well, then together we shall wait for a return of the king's love. Love? You use that word. The king, in his love for me, made use of you. He looked around for the stupidest man he could find, and he found you. I begged him not to marry me to such a fool. <laughs> I have brought a... Stay away from me. What? Uh, about eighteen million. About eighteen million dollars for that. Yeah. Know, which caused or some I mean if that's it's kind of a big deal, yeah. They're saying that, you know, it's it really looks like uh it was done for twice as much. Yeah. Because it's a period piece and because of the sort of yeah. what well I think also usually if there's a big you know, a big epic film of the size, it usually does have a big budget and they kinda, you know. Mm. Uh, but uh we yeah, we really did it uh did it a different way, you know. Yeah. Really worked long long hours and all that. The relationship with your dad, did he, did you want to get involved in this business because of him? Well, I remember, you know, him being a writer and a director. I remember when I was eight years old, like, I was in a movie of his, but it seemed kind of natural to me, like, well, this is just what I'm doing. Daddy's making this, yeah. and I'm doing it too, you know. Um, I guess so. I mean, I really admire my father, and it, it seemed like he had a really good time and was really got to communicate, you know, to a lot of people, his kind of ideas, wacky or not, you know. Yeah, Putney Swope was... Yeah. I mean, films like that, something really innovative. Yeah. Which ones were you in? What were you in when you were eight? Uh, I was in a film called Greaser's Palace. Oh, sure, I remember. Yeah, yeah Greaser's right. Palace I was in. I played the, the little kid, of course. Yeah. You went from New York out there and then came back here and, and met John Sayles? And yeah. And he put you in... Yeah, and, and Baby, it's you. Yeah. At the time, I was... Um, I was working in a restaurant called Central Falls. It was a busboy, and I was like, 
a lot of people, a lot of friends of mine were all auditioning for this. This is John Hughes, so this going to be a big deal. And, you know, yeah. Vinny Spahn was in it, Roseanne Arquette. And I was like, wow. Yeah. And as it turns out, I wound up getting cut out of the film after I told everyone, now I finally made it, you'll see me in this movie. <laughs> yeah. So they all say, hey, Robert, maybe it's you. If you could design a career today, I mean, you've got three films coming out, which is would be, and, and when you look at the people you're playing with that are in those films with you, including Ian McKellum and Nigel Hawthorne and Richard III and Jodie Foster directed, uh, what kind of career would you design? What would you, how would you shape it? Wow. Well, I think now I'd, I'd want to lean more towards really, uh, with films like Restoration, it really is also about the personal journey of making the film and that there are lessons that, you know, that, that I have as a man that are sometimes can be in, in the scripts, the kind of, in the kind of films you do. And I guess I don't know about so much designing a career as much as staying really open to um, to being uh, to being <coughs> to, to spontaneously feeling you know, what you're drawn to, what makes what makes sense for you to do. Because I see a lot a lot of people. You know, I'm not a great businessman, by the way. <laughs> you know, I don't have any deep insights here. But I see a lot of people try to design a career and they go, "I'm going to do a movie like this. Yeah. I'm going to do a Johnny Hancock yeah. movie, and I'm going to that." And sometimes it really works, but for what? And then, yeah. You know, I. You can do Johnny Handgun movies, you know, until the cows come home. Right. Or, or uh, it doesn't work at all, and then they're like, God, what's wrong with this picture? I just spent all this time thinking I had it all together. And, yeah. what, it, what intrigues me are people like a Redford, say. Yeah. You know, who, you know, who takes a serious interest both in acting and in directing, and also a serious interest in projects that he likes. Sometimes they successful, some critically acclaimed, as in Quiz Show, where he just directs. Yeah. You know, at the same time, uh, probably some disappointment at the box office, but who has shown enormous sense of integrity about how he chose and and the kinds of combinations he's done. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that that would that's a great role model because this one he really has operated in both those worlds and also has somewhere great like Sundance, which is like just really this really yeah exactly great creative atmosphere and you know the, probably the, there's no better champion of independent films in america yeah. than robert redford yeah that's true yeah. when shakespeare mckellum yeah what, what do you get out of that wow well ian and i sir ian yes sir mr mr sir ian <laughs> sir ian yes. mr uh met on on restoration and um you know as usual if, if i was about to start shooting the lead in a film i was probably pretty close to a personality meltdown a few weeks before we started shooting yeah. and he was very comforting to me and, and and also uh just became good friends with him and then he said hey i'm doing richard the third and i've got this really small part in it but i'd love you to be in the film and, and you nice play the to, queen's sister uh i mean queen's brother I'm sorry yeah i play the queen's, queen's brother play queen's sister i, yeah. I play both <laughs> yes I mean, it was one of those um yeah, I play the Queen's brother, Earl Rivers, who's kind of like the Roger Clinton of the uh, of the royal family. Now, how would you characterize the Roger Clinton of the royal family? He's, you know, he's kind of... <laughs> has a, his own lifestyle. Yeah, he's, he's got his own <laughs> lifestyle. He's kind of trying, just happy to be there and kind of, you know, yeah. knows how to, you know, happily capitalizes on the situation. Would you want to direct? Yeah, I really would. I'm, uh, I've actually written a film that I'm going to try to, to get on next year to direct. What's it about? Or does it jinx it to talk about? No, not at all. It's basically about a guy who walks dogs for the rich and famous in Manhattan, and he takes them all out to Central Park, and he has an out-of-body experience. He wakes up <laughs> all, the, all the dogs have run away. One of the dog's owner is a large, angry man named Ron, who's, uh, who's yeah. teetering on a, on a meltdown himself, so then it creates a situation where he has to get out of town. And it's, it's just basically kind of a, a wild, a, an insane weekend is basically what it's about. When will it go into production, then? Well, uh, let's see. I uh, probably in a few months, if I get if I get busy and follow up on what I said I'd do. Would you do you think you might? As Sean Penn was here, okay, and would much rather direct than act. Sure. Even though I'm told this new film he has, he's very good. Yeah, Dead Man. Walk. Have you seen it? Yeah, he's yeah. amazing. It's, in it. it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's really good performance. Uh, but he said he hates, really doesn't really want to act, and really wants to direct. I mean, can you imagine yourself being seduced by directing because of the control? Oh, because of, yeah. I mean, for two main reasons. For me, I mean, just realistically, just like not having to wear makeup in yeah. the morning. <laughs> exactly. You just kind of come in. You can dress like pig pen yeah. if you want. You know, yeah. there's no nothing. Would you miss for wearing it. a tie like that? Come on. Yes, I would. Yes, <laughs> I am. I am in fact in my element here. <laughs> yes. But you know. But directing wouldn't. What? What's I would. The... I, I guess what I guess what it is for me mostly is that I would love the experience of. Uh, 
of helping other actors feel free to do whatever they wanted to do. And I think largely that is a, it's the director sets the example for what kind of experience, you know, what the, what the, the, the boundaries are of the kind of experience he yeah. wants you to have on this. Does he want you to be specific as a or does he want to be surprised? And I would just want people to say, oh my God, I can't believe I just did that. Or, God, that was really realistic and I felt that the environment was, you know. I mean, Oliver Stone really sets up, sets up his movies like that so that you really feel like you're doing something that's kind of like, wow, this is kind of, this is important, that, you know, that this goes well and, you know. It is amazing. Oliver was here. We did an hour, which we taped for, for next week. Uh, last night okay. and, and talked about a lot about the making of Nixon and he and I have talked about almost every film that he's done and, and had long conversations about it. He seems obsessive about the way he approaches the film in terms of who he talks to and having people on set and, yeah. and, and his, his genuine, well you describe it, what's he like when you work with him? Well, I remember on Natural Born Killers it was like loud heavy metal music playing coming from the uh, from the cart, you know, where, where his uh, his monitor's on and where his chair is, and it, it was it was like uh, the environment was definitely being set. You know, we were shooting in a real prison, and it was just it, it was hot. it was like being in hell, basically. This one part of Natural Born Killers and the prison yeah, break right, and all that right. stuff, it was literally like going to hell every day. Yeah. And he had us doing this one scene where we were walking back underneath where all the cells are in this actual prison. And I'm like, where are we? Like, well, this is the sewer system. <laughs> We're going down to like prison, prisoners dropping, just like water. Just, <laughs> yes. It was the most disgusting thing that I've ever been done. I was like, yeah, yeah, do it again, do it again. Great, great. <laughs> it's down at the end. I did like six times. I, was, I can't sit. I said, I'm not doing it anymore. I broke. Like my, my Hanoi Hilton moment. He broke me. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody you wanted to work with you haven't had a chance to, you desperately would like to work with? I really like uh, Chris, Chris Walken a lot. I do too. I think he's yeah. great. Yeah. He has really sort of defined uh, character acting today. I think so, yeah. yeah. I just think he's done a lot of great parts. And I, I feel the same way about John Malkovich. I just really like, I really just like watching him work. You know? I saw him do this, this play in uh, West End in London, and I was like, oh my God. Wow, I really couldn't have even begun to attempt to do something like what he did out there. And I was like, great, that's what I like. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Maybe I'm in the wrong business when Ooh. you see somebody that's that good. I like feeling that way, though. I yeah. like, you know, seeing a performance that, that makes me question whether or not I should, you know, turn it in. Or to show you how, how hard it is to get to some sense of genuine excellence. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even, uh, even, uh, do, and what did they say? Anything worth doing is worth doing poorly. <laughs> you know? Did Joseph Campbell say that, or who was it? I don't know. Someone else. <laughs> someone really smart said it to me, and now I'm making it seem like, you know, I've retained it for years. But, um, yeah, I mean, any anytime you get up, you know, at 6, 10 in the morning and, and go to work for 14 hours a day or whatever, you know, I mean, it's, it's a labor of love, even if it's, a, you know, a cheesy sci-fi, you know, holiday picture. That's Jodie Foster. She's the goods. <laughs> what does that mean? She's just, she's it. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, you know. As she, a director. She's an a, amazing director. She's really, uh, really specific and really nurturing. And it was the first time I'd ever worked with a female director, but yeah. I think it was really, per, it was her personality more than anything else. She just had a kind of an ease about the way that she, she directed. Like, look, I know what I'm doing, and I, you know, expect uh, that you do too. I did hire you, and I knew what I was doing when I hired you. So relax, I'm relaxed. You know, <laughs> and uh, like very few things go wrong. It's kind of it was easy, yeah. really easy. I assume that there are some people like I would assume Oliver would come enormously prepared. Other directors would come and give you a lot of leeway. Yeah. Where is she in that sort of? <clears throat> well, I'll put it this way. Yeah, she she's already probably gone over what's going to happen in the scene or, or how it's going to be shot and what most of the specifics are enough time so that she's not going to be surprised on the day and then while she would say there'd be some days she'd be like oh just 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 stop trying to stop trying to impress us with your imp improvisation just stick to the script today or other times you say well just try to gross your sister out and keep it pg-13 you know <laughs> yeah i mean she really changed she changes up her style you know 
from day to day too in some ways, but it just look at her. It's like I don't. I have a feeling she's not going to drop the ball, you know. Yeah. And there I'm like about everything she does, either to certainly on camera. I mean, she has and to read about her and to an interview, she has this sense of coming, knowing what she's doing, having yeah. having sort of covered all the angles when she arrives that yeah. morning for a day's work. Yeah, and I also think that anyone who's been around the industry on the other side of the camera as long as she has is probably more well equipped to direct or, or to understand how important the attitude of the director is than, than most directors, you know? Because, I mean, largely, I think for the most part, actors do a lot more films than directors do, you know? So a director who's just starting out has maybe done one, two, or maybe he's doing his third film, and most of the actors he's working with, some of them might have already done 50 films, you know, and really have something to say. How many films, ideally, would you like to do one a year? Oh, yes, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. That'd be really nice. What's to prevent you from doing that? Is it finding roles you like? Um, I guess so. It's partially that and also uh, partially, uh, I know it is a business and I do have mortgages and stuff like that. I mean, in some ways it just is my <laughs> job. This is how I make my money so I can yeah. feed my family and, and do the stuff, you know. And uh, again, like I said, you know, I'm not, I, I don't know, I'm not like you know some some Forbes guy or something, you know. I'm just yeah. kind of. Like... But can you imagine anything else that would make you happy than working in film? Uh, I like writing music. I do. I've composed music for quite a long time, and uh, it'd be great if I could do that. You know, I thought, I'd like to incorporate that too, maybe with uh, some films that. Uh, <clears throat> when I start directing, I could score, do something like that, you know. Act, direct, and score your own film. Sure, why not? Why oh, not? that sounds like <laughs> Chaplin, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. Robert Downey Jr. in Restoration, Richard III, and Home for the Holidays. We'll be right back. Stay with us.